volume 22 of Nintendo Power. And this is all the way back from 1991. And I remember getting this issue of Nintendo Power as a kid. Now, not this particular copy, because this is when I purchased later. I don't have any of my Nintendo Powers, unfortunately, from when I was a kid. But I have gone back and gotten some of them, and this is one of them. And I remember getting this one in the mail and seeing, you know, Metal Storm and seeing the robot and reading the review for this and stuff in here and thinking, God, I want to get that game. It looks so freaking awesome. And I never found it at any stores. Um, I put it on my birthday and Christmas list. My parents were never able to find it. So it obviously got a limited release, and now the only time I ever see it is at, like, conventions for convention prices. Unfortunately, this game is a fortune now. But there's a reason for it. It is a good game. And we'll, we'll see here, flipping through here, why. I love every issue of Nintendo Power always had this uh, weird, you know, subscription card thing to uh, get you to subscribe. That's really what I want to look like. That guy looks awesome. Yeah, that's going to get me to subscribe. God, the 90s were a weird time. And another cool thing about Nintendo Power, you had this player player's pulse section, and this is where, uh, you know, kids could write into Nintendo Power and ask questions and tell stories and all kinds of stuff. Like this giant Game Boy this girl made. And look at all these kids. I wonder where, if any of these people any of these kids are watching this video now that would be interesting if, if this is you if you're any of the kids in this picture or in this magazine please leave a comment below that would be awesome I doubt that'll happen but that would be cool and then yeah right after that it went right into Metal Storm and this is one of the things I loved about Nintendo Power was they put a lot of effort into the layout and stuff like you had this cool schematic of the robot like all of this stuff just made me want to have the game and this is one of the reasons why I miss having video game magazines, because you just don't get the same kind of thing reading, you know, articles on the internet about it. And also, again, this was before the internet, so this is where you got your maps and your tips and everything was from Nintendo Power. Or, you know, Sonic, or no, was it Sega Visions, I think was the was the Sega version of Nintendo Power. I gotta get some, I, I had a few issues of that, and I've gotta get them again. But yeah, just look at these maps, like full maps for the levels and tips and everything. This is this is just so freaking awesome. It's even cool to have now. You know, when I play some of these games, uh, instead of looking up walkthroughs on the internet, if I know that I have a Nintendo Power um, that has like a walkthrough or maps or whatever, I'd rather sit with this on my lap and play because it's just way more nostalgic feeling sitting with a Nintendo Power on your lap while you're playing through a game. Something else I wonder too is this this model they made of the uh, Metal Storm robot. Like, does this little toy still exist? Does somebody have this sitting on their desk somewhere? Because I'm mean, here. Look, just look at the cover again. A lot of work went into this, and I don't even think I think this is a different model too. I think these are different things. So I wonder if somebody still has these. That would be really cool. And then this was back when uh, Howard Phillips was still with Nintendo. So you had your Howard and Nestor comic, and there was always a tip in here. This particular one was. Uh, it looks like Star Tropics. Not a game that I'm very familiar with. I've only played it for, I think, you know, maybe a few minutes total. I definitely need to play Star Tropics. And speak of the devil, there's uh, another part of the Star Tropics walkthrough here. This was something that was a multi issue feature I remember seeing. And I remember seeing this too and thinking, you know, I really want to play that. But at this point, I had a Game Boy. And I was really into playing Game Boy games, and, and a lot of times when I asked for new games, I asked for Game Boy games. And also, um, this was at a point when the Super NES was going to be coming out. The Super NES. The Super Nintendo. The SNES. Was going to be coming out. So this was late in in the NES's life cycle, Star Tropics. And I, I didn't get a lot of games at that point. Because at that point I was on the Game Boy. And I had a Sega Genesis 2 I got at one point. And I was really into that. But again, just this is where you got your maps and your tuna cola. That sounds disgusting. <laughs> That's gross. Tuna cola. Uh, bell cola. Is everything cola? And I don't know. You're going to have to tell me if everything's cola in Star Tropics. I really need to play this game. And when I do, I will use these issues of Nintendo Power probably to help me. Instead of resorting to internet walkthroughs. Hey, look, it's the Gradius head. I'm kidding, I know what that is. I know that's a Easter Island. Uh, Mo, Mo, Moe, Moa? I forgot how you say those exactly. Enemies and traps, just all kinds of cool stuff, all kinds of hints. And then, and again, like I said earlier, this is where you got your, your, this is where you got your codes from. Like, this classified information section in Nintendo Power, this is where people sent in stuff they figured out. Like, here's, uh, what is this? 
each how many shots it takes to kill each of the robot masters depending on what weapon so if you use top spin on snake man it's going to take 14 shots but if you use what is this top spin on shadow man it only takes four hits so this is again how you figure it out super jump silver surfer Ugh, that, that game is ridiculous Codes for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. No, oh, and then classic codes, the Konami code, of course. You know, this is where people figured this out. Adventure Island 2, that's a cool series too, Adventure Island. I think this is the one that Adventure Island 2 introduced the, the little dinosaur buddies. They weren't in the first one. But God, yeah, just flipping through this is really nostalgic because like, it takes me back to being a 10-year-old kid and flipping through this and then seeing, holy shit, Operation C Contra is going to be on the Game Boy? Hell yeah. I, I had Contra on the NES. And then a buddy of mine had Super C, so we used to kind of trade them back and forth and I was super excited. And then A Boy and His Blob, this was another game that I really liked on the NES. And I don't think I've ever played the Game Boy version. I'm going to have to find that. But yeah, look again, Operation C. So at this point, there was a section... The Game Boy was still kind of new, so it still said special feature, but basically from this point forward, there was always a, a Game Boy section. A boy and his blob. This was a really fun game on the NES. I'm going to have to track down the Game Boy game and try it out. But yeah, once look, there's a breakdown of what each of the different jelly beans do. It's really cool. Oh, and then there's the Game Boy Classified, so here's tips and stuff for Game Boy games. Like a one-up loop for DuckTales. Boomer's Adventure in Asperger. I have this game, and I have not played it. I, I found this, uh, where did I find this? I think it's my, at a record, Zia Records, I think, for just a few dollars, and it looked interesting, and I, so I picked it up, and I, I still have not played it yet. I'm going to have to try that one also. And then here again, you get a little now playing section. So this is other games that were uh, out that they just did kind of quick reviews of, but not you know full walkthroughs, and you had your top ten. Like Super Mario Land was number one. Obviously Zelda wasn't out yet. Uh, and then you had your coming soon, you know, games that were coming out soon. This is how you found out about games that were coming out. And you know what was always fun is some of these issues in Nintendo Power, if you go back and look through them, that's, there's games that are coming coming soon that never did. And this was another reason why this particular issue was cool, because it had this, this whole thing about how the NES works. And I mean, I know now a lot of us collectors have seen an NES opened up and know what this all looks like, but, you know, again, 10-year-old kid, I didn't know what the inside of my NES looked like. I wasn't going to go to Screwdriver and start opening up in fear of breaking it, you know? So it was cool to see a, a whole teardown of the NES and kind of an explanation of how stuff worked. And then also of the Game Boy, you know? No, I, us kids weren't going to open our Game Boy up at 10 years old, so it was cool to see, and it, you know, break, broke down how things worked. This was a cool issue, for sure. Oh, and then G.I. Joe. This is another fun, and I don't know what this game goes for now, but I know it's getting up there. This was a game that I used to rent quite a bit, but I never owned, but I have a lot of experience playing it. Still not in my collection today, but hopefully I found it, find it soon. I had a bootleg copy of it, but I, I traded it a while back for some other stuff. This is a game, too, where this, this walkthrough is very helpful. Uh, G.I. Joe can be a difficult game if you don't know where you're going. But it's kind of a crossover thing, too, because, you know, I'm looking at Nintendo Power, I'm reminiscing about Nintendo games, but also this is G.I. Joe, which was, a, which was a cartoon that I watched a ton of, so here I'm seeing, you know, old school, I, you know, I kind of forgot about this guy, that his ham, you know, his weapon was a cinder block hammer. Kind of disturbing, actually, I'm surprised it hasn't been done in a horror film or something. Just awesome artwork. I remember this thing. I think my little brother had this vehicle. And then you kind of had, here's the uh, now playing section for NES games and a guide to NES games that had just come out. Bandit Kings of Ancient China. That's another game I've never played before. And then they had this cool section where NES achievers where you could send in uh, pictures of your high scores and they would publish it. I heard a rumor that... Um, Steve Wozniak was a Tetris addict and would submit all kinds of scores for Tetris and they've stopped publishing his scores. So I heard he started submitting the scores under pseudonyms to get them published. So that'd be interesting to know if that's true or not, but I, I know I read that somewhere as a rumor. And then here's a Princess Tomato in Salad Kingdom. This is another game that I have heard is a hidden gem on the NES and I really need to give a try. And based upon what I've read here, 
yeah, I definitely think I want to give it a try. And this was kind of cool too, after this issue that broke down how the NES worked and how memory mappers worked, they would actually start showing how big the game was and which memory mapper it used and everything, which was kind of interesting. And then here is the nominees for the Nintendo Power Awards 1990. And you could uh, vote on these by filling out this official Nestor Awards ballot and sending it in, which this person didn't do. And there was a contest. Every every issue had a contest. I don't know what this one was. I guess it's special. It's going to be different because it's this. But every issue had a contest you could enter. And you could win crazy stuff. Like the phone booth from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. The cop, the cop car from Robocop. Like Robocop's car. All kinds of crazy stuff. Here's another section. Counselor's Corner. And this was a section that was in every, ep every issue. Where people could... Uh, writing questions about how do I beat something and like Mega Man 3 was the hot game so how do I defeat the turtle machine and then a game counselor from Nintendo would would give you an answer back and sometimes it would get published here and then there was these little profiles of the uh, game counselors I wonder where these guys are now like Eli Wolf and Brian Onstein gosh these guys are probably old now <laughs> Maniac Mansion, that's another game that I love. Should do a review of that, that's a great game. And then every issue also had a top 30. Now in later issues when the, the uh, NES and the Game Boy and the SNES were out, there was actually, they did a top 20 for each system. So there was a top 20 NES, a top 20 Game Boy, and a top 20 SNES. But at this point, it, the Game Boy was still new, so it had its top 10 section earlier, and then they still had the top 30 for the NES. And this was cool, you could see how many months it had been in the list. So The Legend of Zelda had been in the top 30 for 31 months. I don't think it ever left. And I think Mario Brothers 3 sat at number 1 for a long time too once it came out. Celebrity Profile, Rain Pryor. As the streetwise TJ on ABC's Head of the Class. Anybody remember Head of the Class? That was a cool show. <laughs> I wonder where she's at now. I should, I should Google Rain Pryor and see... Uh, where she's at now, if she's still active and acting. Oh, and then Pack Watch. This was always an exciting section to look at, too, because this told you about the NES games that were coming out, like Power Blade. This is a fantastic game, and I have the Nintendo Power issue that has Power Blade on the cover. That's another one that I got as a kid. And uh, you got Tailspin, Star Wars. I might be wrong, but this game may not have actually been released, end up being released in North America. I could be wrong, though, but I feel like this might have been end up being just a PAL exclusive game. I'm not sure, though. I might be totally way off on that. Probably am. I've been collecting NES for a long time, and I still, it's hard to remember everything, all the ins and outs of it. Oh, and then the Consumer Electronics Show. This was before there was E3. There was CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, and there was a summer one and a winter one. And if I remember, one was in Vegas and one was in Chicago. And I always dreamed of going to this. Because, like I said, before E3, this is where all the uh, video game manufacturers and stuff showed off all their, their cool stuff that was coming out. So here's a cool pack watch report from the CES show. And then here's a little teaser for the Super Famicom. I think the Super Famicom was out at this point in Japan, and we were just waiting on it here in the U.S., so they were kind of teasing some of the games that were coming out. And then Gossip Galore, more stuff. Oh, and then, yeah, let's see, coming soon, here's a list of games. Let's see if there's anything on here that didn't end up coming out. Oh, California Raisins. There's one. California Raisins. That never ended up getting released, but here it is listed as coming soon in Nintendo Power. Power Blade. I know I have another issue. Maybe it's this one. Let me see. I have another issue that has Bioforce Ape listed in here, and that's another one that never came out. But then Star Tropics 2, this did come out, and I, I need to play that after I play Star Tropics. And at the end of a lot of issues, they had this bulletin board section, which for some reason I always liked this as a kid too. This this told you, you know, how to order back issues, strategy guides, there was the phone directory here, service and parts. This was cool, the world-class service Nintendo thing. You could, there was a list of places you could take your Nintendo to to get it, you know, cleaned or worked on or whatever. And then you had this little uh, letter here from Howard Phillips. And then, you know, what was going to be in the next issue, which like I said, Power Blade, I have this issue. Power Blade was on the cover of the next issue. 
And, you know, if you guys liked this one, I have lots of other old magazines and weird video game stuff that I'd be more than happy to flip through and show you guys. Because I, I love flipping through this stuff. I mean, look, look at this. Look at these four freaking awesome dudes hanging out of a space jeep. Come on. Come on. You don't want to ride in a space jeep? I want to ride in a space jeep with these guys. Anyway, so yeah, that's been volume 22 of Nintendo Power. I hope that was a nostalgia trip for you like it was for me. If you like what you saw, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And as always, thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for checking out this video about old video game magazines. If you like what you saw, let me know down in the comments below because I've got lots of other old magazines and catalogs we could take a look at. Also, uh, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And as always, thanks for watching.